I'm going to show you some techniques that I used when making this necklace with the Lady Pink Opal kit, but you can make it with any of the kits. In this instance, I've wire wrapped the gemstone, but you could basket set it or any way that you usually set your gemstones would be absolutely fine. Let's get started. What you're going to need is the wire from the kit and I've used the D-shape wire for the tendrils of the necklace. So what you're going to need to do is cut however many pieces of the wire that you want for the look of your necklace. For the sake of demo, I'm just going to cut five pieces of wire, which I've already done here. Now it does look really nice if you graduate your wire but don't worry if when you've finished hammering you're not happy with the length because you can trim afterwards. So here is the technique that I use for my necklace except I used a few more pieces of wire starting with the longest in the middle and working your way out to the shortest at the either side so that you get that waterfall effect and you can always hang your gemstone in the centre if you want to add it to your design. So in order to texture these pieces you're going to need a hammer and a block. So here's my well used block and my hammer. So depending on what texture you want to use depends on which hammer you will use but a ball peen hammer works just fine. Now to start off with I'm going to make the anchor point at the top of my wire by just forming a loop with my round nose pliers. So I'm going to just start to turn the wire away from me to form that loop. When I've completed my first loop I'm going to continue going so that I've got a couple of little spirals at the top there to be able to string onto my wire for my necklace. Next I'm going to pop this onto my block just making sure that my little loops are sitting off of the block at the top and hold on to my wire so that it's flat with my fingers. Now I'm ready to texture with my hammer. So just using my hammer to texture all the way down the length of my wire. I like to add some texture to the very bottom because it splays the wire out and gives a really nice effect. Now your wire will start to bow when you start to texture it. So to combat this, you can just turn your wire the other way, use the flat part of your hammer and flatten it out again. This will also strengthen the wire and make your necklace more durable. You can do this as many times as you need to, remembering to keep the loop off of the top so that you don't squash it. And then you'll be left with a really nice textured component from your necklace. So you want to repeat this for as many times as you need for your design. And when you've finished, you should end up with your little textured wire to pop on. Now what I used for the main part of my necklace was the round wire that you get in the kit, but you could also string it on to beading wire if you prefer. I also added some spacer beads to string in between just to add interest. So I'm going to show you how I did that. So at the end of the wire I just wrapped a loop to start off with and this will be an anchor point to connect my chain or whatever else I need to finish off my necklace. So wrapping a loop there and I'm just going to hold it with my pliers and just wrap it around with my fingers. And you will want to trim off any excess wire so that it doesn't snag on your clothes or get in the way while you're trying to put together your design. So I'm going to pop on some spacer beads now. So let's just pop on however many you want for the ending of your design. I'm going to go with an odd number because that tends to look better. So let's just pop on three for the purposes of demonstration. Now I'm using spacer beads here, but of course you could use gemstones, seed beads or anything that you wish to use. I'm going to pop them to the end and leave them there on my wire. And then starting with my shorter piece of wire here, I'm just going to use the loops at the top 
to pop that onto my necklace. So let's pop that on here and drop it down so that you're getting this effect. And then I put one spacer bead between each of my wire components. So just let me trim this off a little bit just so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to pop on a bead and one of my wire components and another bead and my next wire component and another bead and my last wire component and then finish off with the same number of beads as I did at the beginning. So in this instance, it's three. So I'm going to pop on three of my beads. One, two, and three. And then you can keep looking at it to see if you like your design. And if you don't, you can just keep stringing, keep taking away, keep adding until you're happy. And once you have all of the strands that you want that's when you can use your cutters to trim off so you could have them all the same length or you could go in a graduated style with the longest in the middle working your way up and you can do that after you've hammered them so that you've got this sort of effect going on there and you would just continue in this way until you were happy and then wrap loop at the other end so if I show you on my finished necklace you can see that in this case I've added one two three four five six seven eight nine ten of my dangles and then I've got my gemstone in the center and I've just added some chain to the end of my wire to finish off my necklace and in the center I've decided to wire wrap my gemstone and just add it there but of course if you just wanted it to be wire you could just have the wire and put the gemstone itself on a chain that's completely up to you